Welcome to Bridging the Gap, part two. Um, obviously, I'm Kevin. This is Brittany. Um, we are going to talk about um, the tragic events that took place in uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, Peyton Gidron, he was 18 years old, um, traveled three and a half hours um, to Buffalo, New York, because it was the most Black um, populated area that he could find. Um, he streamed it on Twitch, uh, streamed the whole thing on Twitch. Um, he wrote a 180, 180 page manifesto. Uh, God, what else did he do? Um, he actually, so the video came out. He actually, and what, what, what we're really going to talk about, he saw a white person in the store hiding behind a, um, a counter. Out. Yeah, a counter. Yeah. And he, he, he said, so he yelled out, sorry. And and went said, to oh the, sorry and I said oh sorry and then went to the next person, uh, so we're gonna talk about that case and just um, what we think about it and just some uh, a multitude of other things, um, but that's really his information. Um, he pleaded he pleaded not guilty. I think either, I think today or yesterday he pleaded not guilty. Um, he's had this uh, he's had it staged out since January of this year. So it's, it's been well thought out. He's well, he's prepared himself. He had gear on and everything. Um, so and also, um, there was also a mental health record on him um, where he had all, all previously threatened to shoot up his school. Okay. Um, but they also, um, the, the therapist or the mental health advocate that he was um, doing sessions with, um, they also, you know, that was not enough of a red flag for them to continue uh, his mental health uh, treatment in which I feel like that's something that we need to also discuss on this episode because there is whenever you're getting your, your, your gun license, right, you mm -hmm. could have a prior, uh, you know, mental health case and they still uh, will allow you um, the ability to purchase a firearm mm -hmm. that's something that we need to truly discuss yes. because we can't just keep giving people passes for mental health um, manic episodes because mm -hmm. of um, it's so many people lives who are lost every single day yes it's so many people that are subjected to traumatic situations to send them into a manic fr frenzy uh, concerning their mental health however Black people don't get those same passes for having right. mental health crises. Right. These are the same people that are growing up in, in areas like the Ukraine, where it's like literally a war zone when you walk out your door. Mm. You know, parents fear for their children not to return home, whether that be to uh, bullying at school, whether that be to police brutality, whether that be to self-harm whether that be to increase gun violence that's in the communities, mm -hmm. they don't get passes for mental health crisis. Right, right. Exactly. Um, oh, another thing uh, about uh, Peyton, he uh, fell into the great replacement theory, which mm -hmm. is wiping out the white race essentially, and for them to become the minority instead of the majority. Right. And, uh, that's what his main motivation was at all of this was the great replacement theory. So um that's but isn't about that, that stuff. So so also in, in addition to that, uh since we we're going that route, um, that's also a theory that's been put in place uh, because of the abortion law. A lot of people just don't know mm -hmm. that that's the that's the reason why the abortions are put in place is because when you look at the statistics of who the number one consumer of abortions is, is white women. So in order for them to keep their race from dying off and to keep them the dominant race, right, um, then they're implementing that to be able to save Caucasian babies. Mm -hmm. yes, so, and we'll provide so, any stats or anything y'all may have to back that. <laughs> So Definitely. we are very educated in this. I just want to just, 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 just to stop the, <laughs> you know, just, just to stop the heat. <laughs> just the heat. We have stats and everything to prove. Like what well, we said in the first yeah. video, we spend a lot of time making these, uh, making these videos and a lot of time researching and calling. 
So um, take that how you will, but that's just this is the facts. So I just these are facts. We that. no Very one good. thing about business people. Business people know that numbers don't lie. Mm-hmm. And so one thing with bridging the gap that we're always going to give to back up our uh, our thoughts is the fact of numbers. We're dealing with numbers. We're dealing with true statistics. We're dealing with, um, you know, the the analytics of it all um, mm-hmm. because we don't want to come on our platform and shortchange you guys of the truth. Right. And that's what we're here to deliver is the, the unadulted truth, right. unfiltered truth. Mm-hmm. it's an uncomfortable conversation that we're on this platform gonna have right mm-hmm. exactly uh so Brittany, let's talk about the app the apprehension side of things and, oh gosh uh, yeah and i'll provide i'll provide some names and some tragedies that's happened um here okay. in a little bit uh well i can go ahead and do it now um so these are obviously real people real people have lost their lives and 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 hardly sadly nothing's really been done about a lot of these right people. you know right. do justice uh you be Breonna taylor what if they got a settlement check right you know i mean so like um these are like real stories so i'm gonna just dive into some names uh dylan roof killed nine people uh in south carolina at a church um nicholas cruz killed 17 people Patrick Kusai has killed 23 people. Peyton Gidron killed 10. The funny thing about that is all these individuals lived. You know, that's the funny and thing. Was safe, and were safely apprehended. Safely apprehended. Uh, Peyton oh. actually had a gun to his neck, I believe is what they said. And then they, they de-stressed the situation. Uh, to go off scale, they- um, just, just a quick second, my cousin, who was mental, mentally unstable, mentally ill, the cops handled that way wrong you know uh my cousin could have done a little better with the situation in my opinion but he ended up losing his life behind it cop grabbed him like this you know you got from behind and grabbed him like this and 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 this is dealing with somebody who is in a manic episode of a mental health crisis right but uh, christy uh my cousin i won't say his name he didn't kill anybody you know what I mean? He, he, you know, sadly shot the officer, you know, then stuff happens, but the situation could have been handled better. Right. And you have somebody like Mr. Payton or Dylan Roof or whoever, I just read off on this list. They kill, kill people had like this. And then they, they, they get a de-stress. They, they get, get ta- they out. get talked down. They get negotiated with, negotiated. they get bulletproof vests put on them. Mm-hmm. They get, um, you know, the SWAT team to surround them so that they could safely get to the um, emergency responder responder vehicle. These are the injustices that we see each and every day that is not being talked about. So from a psychological uh, perspective, um, you know, I would be more afraid of coming on the scene of a mass shooter than yeah. somebody who is in a mental uh, manic crisis. Yes. Um, one oh, sure. one thing about uh, people who are in uh, manic distress, mm-hmm. um, they can also be negotiated with. Mm-hmm. You can also do less scare tactics because you see, I know uh, for a fact that Arlington uh, PD, they have uh, now implemented a mental health crisis team that'll show yeah. up on the scene. They're not in threatening uniforms. They don't have the sirens and the lights uh, whenever they pull up, but they, whenever they come, they approach the situation differently. Right. In any time that you have a crisis going on, to go and defuse a situation, you can't show up with conflict in your heart. Right, right, mm-hmm. exactly. You have to be able to do your job and mm-hmm. what you were trained to do. Police officers aren't trained to shoot first, so why are they shooting first and asking questions later? And then now we're seeing, you know, with the body cams that are mandated to where they're getting caught up on camera. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, at some point, we have to hold you to a higher standard of accountability because you have the training, you have the crisis training to be able to effectively do your job. If not, then you wouldn't pass certain tests to become certified police officers. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. 
Um, also not, not even that, just the extensive, uh, amount of time that you have to go to school mm -hmm. to become a, a mental health, uh, at, well, a psychologist or a therapist or a counselor, you have to go through extensive hours of training to be able to do your job. Mm -hmm. So the question is what's going on with the workforce and why these people, what's going on in, in their trainings, what's not being taught was mm -hmm. not being not being gaps to uh, you know connect the dots to say hey we repeating the same thing repeating the same thing without a change mm -hmm. is only uh insanity so why are we being so insane about something that's right in front of our face each and every day right. in so many different cases mm -hmm. you know there's no way that people like Carl Rittenhouse whose mother drove him to a protest to defuse a problem sir you're not a police officer right or you EMT, had any, or you know you're not a, until he had the first you're not in a, it, it, you're not even in the army right uh to <laughs> to be able to go and do um um crisis management like mm -hmm. you know you you as a parent you drove your kids somewhere and you put your own kids life in harm's way right you neglected your child in that moment. Why aren't the parents of these individuals being held to a high caliber? Mm -hmm. Why aren't they be, being sentenced too? Because anytime that there is a neglect of parents situation or a case, these parents are getting slammed with CPS, um, you know, by CPS, hit, hit with, you know, fees galore. Mm -hmm. Why aren't these families having to pay for other uh, uh, affected families of these victims, why are they having to pay for funeral services? Mm -hmm. Why see. aren't they having to be held accountable for the continuation of their mental health treatment yeah. after trauma? Mm -hmm. How do you explain to a kid, um, like in the Bri uh, not Brianna Taylor, uh, Tatiana Jefferson, hearing four words, um, a little bit about her story? You know, she was in the house uh, in the wee hours in the morning playing video games with her nephew, right? Um, the neighbors noticed that the door was cracked at the front door and uh, they called the police just to do a wellness check to make sure that everything is okay. So uh, in the process of the police officers who showed up to the scene um, creeping, you know, on the side of the house, rightfully so, she went to go get a gun to protect her household. We all have that right. That's the Second Amendment, a right to bear arms. So why was her right taken from her to be able to protect uh, her own household. What do you say to that kid that, you know, about police officers that's not gonna seem threatening for the rest of their lives? Mm -hmm. What is going on with the continuation? Is he even getting continual mental health services to be able to work through the PTSD from that situation? Um, it's one thing to cut a check for somebody for their loss, but it's another thing to make sure that they have continual care to be able to manage the trauma. Mm. Um, because one thing about mental anguish, there's not a dollar that could compensate you for mental anguish. Right. You know, how do you expect for that child not to grow up and have a tainted vision of the people that are supposed to come in and save your life? Mm -hmm. To be able to come and protect and serve the community in which he would one day buy a house. Mm -hmm. You know, what does his conversations to his children one day look like? Right. Is, it the, is it the story that we all get told, you know, as African-Americans growing up, whenever you get pulled over, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Don't talk back, don't reach. Um, you know, don't, don't make any sudden movements. Just get the ticket and go on mm -hmm. or you might lose your life. Right. You know, whereas you have our white counterparts that can get out, wave their hands in a threatening way, walk up on police officers, assault them, and they still be detained in peaceful. a safe yeah, peaceful. and yeah. peace, peaceful, peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's definitely a big difference. Yeah. Um, uh, just a couple more names um, that I want to, you know, remember them by, you know, and, and everything. Uh and keep in mind, all these people I'm about the name off were unarmed at the time they died. So, and killed, didn't kill, didn't kill anyone, didn't kill anybody. So, uh, Terrence Crutcher, Trayvon Martin, uh, Breonna Taylor, Botham Jean, which you know Botham Jean's story pretty well. Um, George Floyd, Eric Gardner, 
all these individual uh, they were all murdered excuse me um uh, george floyd was probably the biggest case out of all the these the um they were all just so sad trayvon's uh was bad um and i think with the george floyd case I think that that was considered the biggest one because it was ex- it exposed, exposed what yeah. people had been experiencing yeah. in private. That was a hard um, video. Uh, it uh, it was a nine minute and some and some change video mm-hmm. uh, length of time to be able to digest as a nation, yeah. and I think that that's why you saw a rise in people because anytime that you get rich people to care about property problems is a problem yes yes Um, whenever a situation can bring out the masses it's massive that and and that to me was the biggest when i look back at all these cases and multiple others um george he got people from oklahoma protesting he got people wherever like they were all protesting everybody nationwide nationwide same cause um the phones um Man, that plays a big part, you know, seeing yeah. justice and, and filming and doing, you know, I wish they, I probably wouldn't have videoed it. I would have probably tried to help them as much as I could. Right. But at the situation, but like, I'm so thankful that these people get to have these videos for the world to see and for like, for people to show true injustice and for, and, and, and really and, try to cut and the, the thing's head off, you know. Not, not, and not only that, it's the, dehumanizing yes. of another individual nine minutes. to be able for nine minutes and to hear a man cry out for his mother well, that's been that was already dead she's already that was dead. already dead you know what i mean you know what it, the proof was in the pudding in the in exact moment i i think that i think about this every day mm-hmm. had there not been a national pandemic going on to force people to be inside their homes the only thing you're able to do really is work from home watch tv you know you're you're in the house everything is shut down in the world and at that moment people had no other choice to turn a blinded eye to they had to look at that for Mm -hmm. nine minutes they had to experience the agony and the pain for nine minutes Mm -hmm. they also had to look at Brianna Taylor's story. Yes, yes. That, this that young happened, lady. That happened, that happened pretty close to the George Floyd incident. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that enough was enough for the people to see mm-hmm. and experience as a collective. And to be out at the protest during during that time mm-hmm. was life-changing for me. Yes, I went to a protest. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. I remember the Brianna Taylor... Me and Fallon, we were I actually I think we were watching the news about George Floyd or around there, you know, you know, we talked about it for a while. And then Fallon, she got on her phone and was like, Kevin, uh, a lady named Brianna Taylor just passed away at her house. And I was like, God, oh, that's another one. You know what I mean? Whatever. And then and, yeah. and just seeing that and and just seeing how one. that blew up, like just right then. Like I was like, wow, so we're never gonna get out of this. You know what I mean? That was a 2020 was a dark time, which we'll talk about. Oh that. yeah. That you know that's, on, a, on another yeah, that's, episode. That's, that's, that's like five episodes, but um, yeah, that was that was a crazy time. Uh, I really want to get into uh, sentencing. That um, there's not been too many cases where the officers um, or the murderers that like the Peyton Giddens of the world that get those proper sentencing. Uh, you right. Know, I think uh, how uh, Derek Chauvin who killed George Floyd. What did uh, he got? What twenty five of life, maybe. Or something yeah, like that. And, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't just enough. G- for right. for the judicial to stand on biblical practices, they mm-hmm. don't practice biblically. Yes, yes. <laughs> because it talks about an eye for an eye, a tooth mm-hmm. for a tooth. And so we have to understand that no justification of, of a time sentence is enough for a family member to say enough time is enough Mm. to compensate me for the loss of my loved one these are not just people these are 
brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, uh, fathers, uh, aunties, um, at, you know, mentors. Mm. Um, because just because you don't biologically have children, that doesn't mean that your life is not impactful to someone that's around you. Right. Um, these are people, co-workers. We spend a lot of time with our co-workers, so we ultimately sometimes become friends outside of work. Yeah. And to watch your loved one suffer to that magnitude how do you say 25 years is enough time mm -hmm. how do you say in botham jean's case with amber geiger the police officer they say hey i made a mistake right. i went into the wrong apartment but when i walked in, when i came in i came in ready prepared to shoot mm -hmm. is that the way that you always walk in your house right because I know it's not the way that I walk in mine and I'm right, licensed exactly. to carry. Exactly. Um, also, um, looking at the case with Kyle Rittenhouse, I have never seen the utmost disrespect where a judge went over to console somebody that has just went to a, a place that was a peaceful place, peaceful protest. To go out your way because you was you wasn't even from there. You and your mom took a road trip so you could go solve a problem. And then you at the bar when you get bailed out of jail with your mom living your best life. Mm -hmm. This is not somebody that's showing remorse. So why do we keep showing remorse to people who need to be put down? Mm -hmm. Um I just I just googled uh, twenty two and a half years for uh, Derek Chauvin. Twenty two and a half years for a life that'll never. And how I, I I don't remember George Floyd age. Can we get that information out? I got you right now. Uh, to piggyback on that, uh, a case popped up to mind um, was the uh, Brock Turner case. With the judge, okay. he's like, you have a bright future. He sexually assaulted the lady that was sleeping and everything. Uh, he was going to Stanford, I believe, swim. He was a swimmer. And they was like, you have a bright future in front of you, yada, 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 yada. And I was like, these, <laughs> I was like, this is. But, but what about the lady future? Yeah, what she... about the lady's future? <laughs> you know, um, he, George Floyd was young. He was only 46 years old. 46 years old. 46. So he's older than what, what would we say, a 20, 22 year sentence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. how do you justify that mm -hmm. his daughter God, saying, his daughter's young too um, and she has to grow without a father without a father and just the sentencing for our judicial system is just terrible i could go down for weed or whatever you know what i mean i could go down for something or i can do the dog same fighting thing. i can do the same crimes that we've just read and talked about and i would get the death penalty I would never immediately again. immediately it, I would, immediately i wouldn't even get the 22 and a half years that right Derek shopping got you wouldn't even get looked at as a, a individual with a bright future ahead of you and you're an outstanding young man mm -hmm. you know right. your resume speaks for yourself being a college athlete um we see so many different cases with college athletes that are riding with individuals and it'd be the wrong place wrong time and mm -hmm. their lives are over because there was a little little bit of marijuana in the car. Right. They lose their scholarships. They lose their ability to be able to go to school to do continuing education after that. They lose their right to um, financial aid. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the things that uh, we have to pay attention to because these are real things. These are real uncomfortable conversations that are not being had. And I feel like that is the demise of mm -hmm. our society. Even, um, you know, how they get to show up to court. Uh, Amber Geiger, you know, she was booked with dark hair. In the videos, you know, after she shot him when she could have rendered aid and chose not to. She went and made a personal phone call. Um, get to show up in court with blonde hair. To get the sympathy pass for the blonde hair, blue eye experience, mm. experiment. And also to you guys, um, there is an actual experiment, a blonde hair, blue eye experiment. Um, we encourage you guys to check it out on YouTube. Um, you know, maybe later on we'll do like a, a, a small uh, tidbit on it to be able to give you guys some insight on the psychology behind 
um, like the doll experiment. Um, these are things that, um, you know, people have to bring up in, in uh, conversations mm -hmm. because it's a real deal. These are children. Children are taught certain things at home. This is stuff is beginning. This is the threat to society that's beginning uh, to start at home. Mm -hmm. You know, um, favoring uh, lighter complected people over dark complected people. Um, and just um, in me and Kevin's private conversations, we've talked about um, the difference in how the media yeah. uh, causes us to look at other people who are the same ethnicity as if, oh, you know, he got on a, he has on a chain uh, yeah. or he or pulled up to the gas yeah. station playing loud music or uh you know he might have been smoking a cigarette and we might have missed mistook it for for marijuana you know mm -hmm. these are um things that we have to look at ourselves um you know because even in those situations you automatically feel like you have to lock your door you have to yes. hold on to your belongings a little bit closer versus um a white person could pull up uh and be just as strange but we don't feel as threatened yeah. why yeah. is yeah. that yeah psychologically it, why is that mm -hmm. uh I, I think it's all just taught uh when you're born how you said man i the media like what i i said i've said this to many people 65 percent of black actors and movies are gangbangers they get the gangbanger roles right um I have, you know, I have tattoos, you know what I mean? Same. And, and everything. Like, I have tattoos. Look same. And um, some people, but, uh, I, wouldn't very say, I, wouldn't educated. I wouldn't say they looked at me differently, <laughs> but like, you can make that assumption. They're like, wow, he's a thug. Like, to my face, I right. have to oh, he's a thug. Or, or like, right. you know, whatever, you know what I mean? People ask, are you going to stop getting them? Are you going to, oh, like, you have such pretty skin. Like, why, why would you do that? People have said stuff like that to me before. And, um, I, it's just all just the media, man. Uh, I, I want to question people on why, if I say if I was to get killed or something, something terrible happens, why would they paint me as they crop out, you know, where I look mean or if I had a mother, right. why would they do that? But if you have a white person or anybody else like that, they get the graduation the, photo, the family the, photos, the family photo. The the smile and face the pictures because you know um, I've, I've taken and, pictures where i've been like this or like you know like, yeah. like, you know what i mean and they were like oh my god look at that thug he right you know, whatever and 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 that and, is a real problem and i don't right. know why because there's a lot of good people that's been killed that's had great stories great upbringings and they they just get painted as this is just this, this and, and it's person. a difference of what they um uh, call you on the media as well um, yeah, because yeah. you know you okay so prime example um like with george floyd and i'll keep going back to that story because that story it, it still haunts me sometimes mm -hmm. um the lack of compassion of it all but um even the the media in that moment uh they took instead of taking a look at the offices in their behavior during that moment. They took digs to look up his criminal history. The $20 counterfeit bill. That was, that's the main people, point people was making. <laughs> but the thing is, regardless, if he was passing counterfeit money during the time, whether or not he was an absentee father, not saying that he was because we don't know uh, his story, you know, he could have been very, uh, very involved in his daughter life. But I'm just saying um, this. These are the things that the media will try to do to slander mm. somebody's character. Why aren't they getting hit for defamation and character lawsuits? Yeah, because in that moment, the fact of the matter was he was an African-American man that had a knee in his neck. Yes for nine minutes you had officers who were also on the scene that watched watched him do it yeah watched, watched him do it nobody intervened mm -hmm. if an individual is riding in the car and we see this um and i, I don't know what the uh statistics are on this but i know a lot of young people in the african-american community 
get group sentences uh, or group charges because one person was in the car with a bag of weed. Mm -hmm. Everybody collectively gets a charge because they were in that vehicle. Why isn't the same standard applied to officers who stand by and watch their co-worker do nothing? Mm -hmm. Because even in the workforce these days, um, you know, they they want you to not be a part of the group thing. They want you to report. If your coworker does something that's inappropriate, they want you to report that. Mm-hmm. But here we are on live video footage watching these officers stand by and do nothing. Yes. yes. It's, and it's and even it's yeah, it's 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 very disheartening. And I and I see why you know people in the African American community are becoming so desensitized to death and losing hope, um, you know, to even want to progress in life because they have that fear of. Uh, and Kanye West said it best in uh, one of his songs. He um, he was saying uh, basically, and this is well paraphrasing. Um, he's saying, you know, no matter what, you still gonna be a nigga in the bins. Yeah. No matter what you achieve in life, you're gonna be looked at as if you accomplished nothing and you could accomplish way more uh than any of your counterparts that are sitting uh right next to you. They have higher positions, they have higher pay, they have uh way more criminal history than you do. Mm. Um, but they get past this. Mm. Why? That's just like the uh, Supreme Justice that was just appointed to watch her go through the interrogation of people with less educational value. Well, she was way more knowledgeable than them. What? And but, to have yeah. to sit through that. And get your... cut off. Like, yeah, like just little things like that, man. It was just so hard to like, that was hard to watch. Well, I applaud her for no, I didn't mean to cut you off, but just I applaud No, you're her. fine. I I applaud her for um having just patience that. and yeah. remaining calm because like God, I don't know too many people that would just sit there and just continually get cut off and not say yeah. you know, the, you know, they was they was the, the, you know, but oh Katanji Brown is crazy. Oh, she yeah is temperate. That's exactly what they wanted to do. She held up, she held up, she held her cool. So yeah, and and even even in the times where you do have the right, the the urgency to stand up for yourself, like uh, Maxine Waters, she's a phenomenal with what she does. Love her. Um, she don't take crap, and I appreciated the moment that she stated and was very abdomen uh, about uh, or adamant. I'm sorry uh, about reclaiming my time. Mm-hmm. Because for one thing, even if you don't agree with what somebody's saying, give them the respect yes, please. to have the floor for their moment. Mm-hmm. Give them the respect to honor their educational training. Yeah. Give them the respect of being a human being. Give them the respect of being a human being that has a nat- uh, 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 an emotion because we all have emotions. Right. But why are Black women portrayed to be angry Black women for expressing their sentiments on, on something that they're passionate about? The, uh, yeah, passion- yeah, yeah. And, and even like um, in, in the media, again, why aren't we allowed to use our freedom of speech? Mm-hmm. Everybody has a choice, a, a right to sit at the table to have a voice except for us. Why? Yeah. Is it because the words that we're saying out of our mouth hold hurtful truths? Or do they hold mirrors to have you be forced to look at yourself and question yourself? Self-accountability is what a lot of people lack. Mm-hmm. And when you lack self-accountability, you can't change. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of things that we have to sit down and uh, or a lot of times we have to sit down and face our own demons. But if you don't and you just sweep them up under the rug, we have situations like this where we're still dealing with racism 
after the people have marched over the Selma Bridge a long time ago. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, why why aren't we looking at the constitution that was not written to be inclusive of everyone everybody yeah why isn't the constitution changing just like policies and procedures need to be changed and updated within organizations to effectively will make them or help them or aid them in running effectively mm-hmm these are the same challenges that CEOs uh, for major corporations are having to come back to the table in a boardroom and say, hey, we need workers. Yeah. People aren't, people are quitting. Let's develop some people skills so that we could treat people more than just the number. Mm-hmm. We can't just say we need you to slay for us for 40 plus hours a week. Mm-hmm. Go home after you've missed your child's play school play their their uh athletic events their um homework tom we have to be forced to treat these people like people because what people developed during the pandemic was the mentality of i could sit at home and clear 100k a year by doing diy projects on tiktok i don't need a job Mm. i could fulfill my passion and be self-fulfilled with less stress with less mental health anguish with less uh emotional distress um i i don't have to be physically drained to be able to build my dream and so when you move in numbers you're more powerful than moving by yourself and this is uh, another thing that we're going to get into next is community involvement yeah. It takes it takes a village. It, does. it really does. No, that's right. um, and and <laughs> knowing who's um, in charge of your area, your division is important. Um, when we look at people who are running for uh, offices, we need to know these people. We yeah. need to hold them to a, a statue of, hey, this is what you promised us during your campaign. We need you to not only promise, but to deliver. Mm-hmm. What are you coming to do for the black community? That's a question that we need to ask. Mm -hmm. What are you coming? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, my bad. Uh, No, I was just saying because a a lot of politicians, they need that black vote. Oh, yeah. And the woman's vote, the black vote is the two most important. Yeah. Um, They promise all these things that you said and they do not deliver. And uh, us blacks, I feel like having these uncomfortable conversations, you know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we have to stop relying on the hope factor and and hoping that these people are going to make these problems because especially right. the president because yeah if you don't vote for the president that's cool but you know great right, you should but it's really important that you vote for your state elected officials you have to yeah. they just, like the states of the world like uh you know a lot of people don't even know who the councilmen men and women are in their towns yeah, you know or, I mean? or don't even go to uh, city council meetings to know what's going on and with the changes that they're planning on doing, like yeah. taking Black history out of schools. Yes, and they have the most, say, and they, not the most, they have the, the, and you know, people that don't vote have the most say so in what's going on. Right. And if you don't, and vote, you don't, you shouldn't say nothing because <laughs> it, it, it takes two seconds to research and figure out who your city councilman is, who your senators are, who your governor is, who the president is. You know, people right now probably know what Biden's trying to do or what Trump was trying to do or whoever. They just right. see oh, Republican Democrat. And, right. and if you really look at it, you're like, oh, if, if you know, if you're a hard Republican or whatever, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't, I don't agree with anything Trump's doing right now. Let me exactly. see what Biden's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize Biden has so much in common with me or vice versa, Democrat, whatever. You have to not rely on a straight vote ticket. Just and really, just I'm saying, just really do the research for yourself. And and um and and as a community in your little neighborhood, have these conversations. Have, have a, a, a meet a, in in somebody's living room. Go over the councilmen. Go over the senators. Say what we want to hear. You know, whatever. You have to do these things to make true change. You can't just go on Facebook and right. complain about it you know, or Instagram complain about it, you have to make the vote and you have to make these, these, get these people out of here that's doing the wrong. 
Uh, right. And, that, and, and yeah. I think that we also need to come up with a statue of time that they are able to serve just yeah, like the president and most they can get to, they can run for two terms. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if somebody has not produced greater results um, after the second term, Hey, it's time for us to come back to the drawing board because I know for the first time you spend a lot of time trying to correct, um, you know, who was in office before you, but the, the second go around, we should definitely see and feel some changes in the right uh, direction. Um, you know, when you stand up and say comments like, if you don't blo- vote for Joe, you're not black, you know, I think that as black people, we should be highly offended by that and, and really hold people to uh, uh, hold people accountable for sl- sayings like that because it's offensive. It's highly offensive to say um, certain things. That's just like, you know, you can't just call, uh, you know, with the gay community. It, you have to, it's so many, it's so sensitive that you can't just say what you want to say because you think it sounds good. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be a, a politician, you have to be politically correct. Awesome. And, and all the time, not just when you want to appease a certain group of people mm-hmm. and then come over and then, uh, you know, culturally try to fit in. Mm-hmm. You know, these are the things that uh, we need to look at, even in our community. These people that represent our districts, they're not out of reach. They're very, um, they're very approachable people. You just got off and the Fort Worth. I definitely did. I just got, <laughs> actually just got off well, with the mayor in the city of Fort Worth. Um, and hopefully soon we'll have her here on the show. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, but all it takes is picking up the phone to call and saying, hey, I need I need a chance to, you know, express my concerns. Mm-hmm. That's their job to listen to our concerns because they are, they, yes, they are our representatives. Because if we don't go to them and talk to them about what we're needing, guess what? It's not going to get done. Right. Closed I, mouths don't get fed. Right. Um, <laughs> there's just so much to say <laughs> yeah. just like circling in my brain the with the joe biden the, the piggyback on what you said i don't believe all blackness have to be democrat or democrats oh definitely i don't believe that and right what biden was saying like if you're not you know you're not voting for me you're not black and that's been the stigma for so long just not with black people just everybody whites just voting you know because the stereotype is whites are republicans blacks are democrats and they right. come out all the time. But <laughs> I don't agree with that because even when the cameras go off, they go and play golf together. But yeah, exactly. Like we're, <laughs> fight, we're fighting like with the people with the Trump flags, the people with, you know, let's go, Brandon, all these things. Like these dudes is really like friends. You know, yeah. what I mean? like they like they for real hang out together. So like it's not what we think it is. Like it's no, no. Sit there and fight about it and say, oh my God, why do you believe in why do you believe in that? um and secondly what you talked about with the term limits i completely agree um i'm not going to name her name but she's a congressman here in oklahoma who hasn't passed a bill hasn't proposed a bill and she's been in there you know what i'm saying yeah so, like, like what are you doing <laughs> like you know what I'm right saying? and i and i think we as the people need to say hey enough is enough Yes. Um, yeah, you know, you you've served your time, but you have not brought true change. Mm-hmm. And in order for us to keep moving forward, we have to make ne- the necessary adjustments. That's just like if you're not performing well at your job mm-hmm. during your evaluation, when it's time for you to come up for a promotion or uh, yeah. receive an increase uh, of pay, mm-hmm. they look at your job performance. Yes. And if you're not meeting uh, their satisfaction, you're going to lose your job. Yeah. We yeah. have, we cannot uh, differentiate the two. If anything, we have to hold them to a higher standard yeah. because yeah. these are our representatives. Yeah, exactly. As a collective, you agreed when you took that job, when you took that oath to be able to bring effective change. For everybody, Republicans. For everybody, not, not just uh, the people you agree with, not just the people that come to you and they sound, uh, they speak eloquently, 
but to everyone, whether they be at, in poverty or out of poverty, mm-hmm. um, you know, you can't just be um, for one from one group, you know, to speak your own language. And that that's what, um, you know, bridging the gap. Hey, we gain another people's perspectives as a leader. That's your job, because how can you effectively lead? a different uh, crowd of people lest you hear each and every individual's concern and then come up with a solution that will uh, uh, try to appease everyone. Mm. Everybody won't be satisfied with your answer well, all the time. All. But as a leader, sometimes you have to make that executive decision. Mm-hmm from a higher elevated uh cognitive standpoint mm-hmm. um, so our next point uh what i really want to ask you uh one of our last things before we wrap it up is mental health in the black community um uh, you know sure. i'm getting my degree in psychology uh you already have it <laughs> you know so uh, Fallon just got her bachelor's degree and you know her <laughs> so like yeah. um, mental health in the black community is obviously a, a non-existent you know it doesn't really happen I didn't go to yeah. my first therapy so I was 16 um so how just to kind of speak on that and the lack of therapy that uh black people get and just um ways to combat that okay so um, right now, I am uh, currently uh, a therapist uh, at a school. I won't name what school or what district, but um, just to see so many different cases um, on my current caseload, I have about 20, uh, 20 students that I see um, that have been through some of the most traumatic things that um, you know, a grown person couldn't fathom experiencing, mm-hmm. whether that be from homelessness, whether that be um, to losing siblings to gun violence, whether that be them being uh, victims themselves of gun violence or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, strange family issues or even um, abuse and neglect of yeah. uh, parent- their parental figures. Um, I think that in the black community, we have to be vocal and, and be trusting of someone in the mental health professional field mm-hmm. to be vulnerable with. I think that a lot of times we're trained and conditioned to things of, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And that's the mentality that we have that is keeping us so, so trapped mm-hmm. mentally um and he, they they breeds over aggression they breeds not being able to trust the individual they breeds um you know relationship ptsd i mean the list of mental health uh issues go on and on uh when it comes to some things you know just walking out your door and seeing a dead body you know the first time i, I saw a drug deal go bad you know growing up um, it was, you know, um, a drug dealer um, mm. that was, you know, with his girlfriend uh, and she was actually about eight months pregnant. The drug deal went bad and uh, he ended up losing his life. And his uh, girlfriend was also shot in the stomach in the head. I saw that at the age of uh, seven or eight years old. Mm. At the age of seven, I also experienced uh, losing my first friend to um, you know, being killed in a car accident. Um, and so I think that our youth are so desensitized to death because they see it so, uh, uh, so often, and you, hear it in you the know, music. you could hear it in the music, you could hear, you see it on the TV, you could, um, you know, look at your phone and see it. Mm. And so what the the thing that I would like to see more in a black community is funding, uh, fundings and grants that are in programs that are put in not only the schools but in the churches. Yeah. Um, I think that it should also be a mandatory thing that at some point in time in your in your school career, you know, a couple of times a year, you need to sit down for psychiatric evaluation. Um, and that not only just in a black community, but obviously 
um, with these, um, you know, mass shooters uh, that get mental health passes. Why are these people, why, if we start doing psychiatric evaluations, periodically in their lives, we could pick up on things because we're trained for it um, and not being passive of things, just thinking kids are just talking because I can't tell you this semester alone, um, since uh, I have been conducting therapy at the schools, have a, a kid bring a gun to school, you know, and not a, even on top of just the kid bringing a gun to school, we're not even dealing with the, the kids who are around who, him or her mm. that are, um, you know, traumatized to come back to school. Mm -hmm. These kids are also around uh, a lot of drug traffic. You know, we're not having, uh, you know, substance abuse counselors come in and educate on what drugs can do to you. And we are seeing a rise in, um, you know, music artists that are dying from, uh, what is it, fentanyl? Fent mm -hmm. Fentanyl, fentanyl yeah. Because they don't know what they're taking. You have so many young people who are experiencing organ uh, failure because they aren't aware of what they're consuming. So it's bringing knowledge uh, to bridge the gap. It's bringing knowledge to break the uh, negative connotation around therapy. Therapy is not just for crazy people. Like we say it is, therapy is a form of preventative care. Just like you would have to go to your primary care physician to go get your yearly checkup. Just like you have to go to the dentist uh, or you're supposed to go to the dentist every six months. We have to start doing active mental health check-ins because we are losing so many young people to suicide. That alone, especially the rise uh, of numbers amongst the college students who have parents to say, you know what, I did my job, you 18, you are on your own. This is a time to key in out and, and teach your kids, hey, this is how you transform from childhood mm -hmm. to adulthood. Let me be here to give you some support, some guidance. Mm -hmm. Let me, instead of you having to work two jobs to put yourself through school, um, because I know I did, you know, um and just just be able to focus on your academics you know you can have a small job yes um but you know to over exhaust yourself to be able to build a, a better future for yourself we have to look at that that's a lot of pressure i know for myself personally it was a lot of pressure for me to go off to college mm -hmm. because i was the the first out of 13 grandkids um they actually went to college more than the the second year um so when you're walking through the door with that type of pressure on you I felt a sense of depression um when I messed up in school because I got uh, the flu during midterms and my grades suffered tremendously not even from that but not knowing of a financial aid paper that needed to uh, sit a simple signature on there I was dropped from my classes twice and so I'm coming in during midterm time trying to catch up on eight weeks prior of schoolwork. I'm still an athlete during this time. And it's like the pressure and not having mentors to say, hey, I'm just checking on you. How's your mental health? What's going on in your social circle? Are you able to even have a social life right now? Mm -hmm. Because having a social life is important. You have to create a healthy balance of elements in your life, because if not, that's when you go into increased anxiety mode. That's when you go into severe depression and everybody could be around you and nobody know. That's why it's considered the silent killer. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, they were laughing this day so much, but they felt nothing in the inside when they went back into the dorm rooms. We have to start actively doing something about it not just bringing it up when it's a time of crisis but as a form of preventative care to say hey we hear you we support you we stand in we stand in solidarity with you and we're here to be able to give you gems to help you navigate through life uncertainties because you still have um just like uh, you know being uh, wrapping up school during covid uh I can't tell you how many funerals I went to um, from not just people, uh, you know, I knew as associates, but these are personal loved ones. 
um, and still having to come and do a seven page paper on dead. Mm. Having to awaken a trauma of scars that are not even healed. We hadn't even discussed the sexual assaults or uh, the rapes and molestations that go on in our community. We hadn't even touched on that. We hadn't even touched on the injustices that women receive after their bodies have been violated. Um, we hadn't even touched on the children that are growing up with uh, one parent households because one parent is in the system or one parent is struggling out on drugs or just chose to merely, you know, uh, abandon them mm -hmm. we hadn't even touched on the cps case numbers and the cps workers that are underworked and overpaid uh, well underpaid and overworked excuse me um and eventually those children go back into the same households that they're taken from we're not even talking we hadn't even discussed their mental health mm -hmm. you know what uh licensed psychologists are assigned to these individuals and another thing that I would like to break the uh, the negative stigma on in the community, when it comes down to finding a mental health provider, don't be so gun hold on the color of their skin. Don't be so gun hold on this. I'm a woman, so I have to go to a woman because only a woman I understand. These people including ourselves because even like you you know you, you're in college right now right. you're gaining the experience from a psychological perspective to be able to go out and do professional mental health work uh in the field of, in the realm of psychology um we are all we're trained you know all of our upbringings are different but that doesn't mean that we can identify with your struggle. That doesn't mean that we're not educated on what to call your mental health uh, deficiency that you're experiencing at the time. And it sure doesn't uh, affect our ability to be able to effectively help you. Mm -hmm. So don't get caught up on it. I, I know that me personally, when I when I first started, um, you know, going to therapy for myself, I was so gun hold on finding an African-American female therapist. But when I found them, I fired off four of them. And it's also knowing that you have a right to say, you know what, this is just not a good fit. I've done a couple of sessions with you. And guess what? We won't take it. We can't, we're not offended by that at all because we understand sometimes it's just not a good fit. That don't mean that we think you're a bad person. Um, that just means that you need to go to somebody else that can connect with you mm -hmm. uh, and your personalities. Mm -hmm. So don't get so caught up on it. The therapist that I end up finding uh, was a Caucasian uh, lady, uh, very, very cool, uh, very educated, very knowledgeable, uh, very, very much so uh, prepared to do her job. Yeah. Uh, another lady that I still practice, Dr. Kundalini's uh, meditation uh, from uh, was a, a Indian lady. And although there was a slight language barrier, we still got each other. Mm -hmm. We were still able to convey communication through body language, um, through life experience. Uh, although she was from a totally different culture. So that's one thing that I would like to speak directly to the black community about is finding a therapist that's a right fit for you. And you can also check out uh, psychology.com and you can filter out what type of therapist you're looking for if you are having trouble paying for therapy, they have community resources um, for free um, you know, therapy sessions. You might get six sessions. However, you could still, after that six sessions, if you still feel like you need further sessions, you can resubmit paperwork and have another additional six sessions until you get it right. Sometimes you'll stop going to sessions and you know, because you feel like you're better in that area, However, anytime that you start to feel triggered by something, go talk to somebody that is qualified to help you. Yes. Prayer, prayer can, it, it can fix a lot of things. But also, I want to say this. God gave people gifts to be able to stand in the capacity of mental health workers, 
to be able to go to school and get certified and licensed to do a great job that could also aid with your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people just simply have chemical imbalances that are going on that doesn't make you, you know, less than, because we all know broken crayons still color just fine. But sometimes you need some additional help uh, with, with medicine. Sometimes you need to incorporate meditation. Sometimes you just need to incorporate, uh, you know, hobbies, healthy hobbies that don't include self-medicating. So uh, thank, thank you for allowing me that time, Kevin, to just shed light on, um, you know, my perspective from a, a mental health uh, professional standpoint. So um, no, that was great. Um, <laughs> that was great. I was like, yeah, that's some good gems. Um, just, um, what just pay back, just don't be afraid to reach out. Um, yeah. don't ever be afraid. Um, you can all, uh, I'll put the link in uh, our socials in the description again, it's bridging the gap 34 on Facebook, bridging the gap underscore 34 on Instagram. Um, yeah, so um, this is Bridging the Gap. This is Brittany. I'm Kevin. Uh, our social media is Fallon. So you can reach out to any three of us anytime. So thank you guys. And we definitely, yeah, we, and we definitely want to hear from you guys. Yes. Um, don't be afraid to reach out um, because without you guys, we don't have the no. information that we need to be able to produce uh, knowledge uh, for you guys to be able to learn from us. And also, if we missed out on anything, we also want to hear that information because we want to be our and show up as, uh, you know, excellence on this on this platform. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not missing anybody uh, or even a topic that you guys are passionate about that someone else hasn't hit yet. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, thank you so much for tuning in to Bridging the Gap. That's Kevin Wilson. I'm Brittany Washington. You guys have a great day.